Okay, everybody? Not all at once now. Come on. All right. So we have a uh, 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 guest visiting us from Gainesville today, and um, I'm really excited to hear what she has to talk about. It's one of our keynote uh, addresses. So um, before I bring her up, though, I wanted to mention, too, I, I heard and there was a little bit of chat and questions being asked about getting into the industry and everything uh, on the last panel. Um, after Kathy does her, uh, her address to you guys, we're going to actually have a panel that is about getting into the industry. And we've got three experts, uh, local VR experts, that are gonna come up and talk about that. Um, so stick around and if you know there are other students or people that might be interested in that, let them know. But, but right now, we're gonna hear all about diversity in AR and VR. And our guest is an AR VR producer. And um, if you look on the IX website, it says that she's an AR VR evangelist. So give her a big like Sunday morning church welcome for Kathy Hackle. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. Hi. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> so the, basically my title as evangelist, I kind of go around and speak at a lot of events and try to get as many people excited about VR and AR. So that's kind of what that is. Um, but um, some of you guys might not know me. I really don't come from a technical background. I come to VR and AR from a storytelling and um, a marketing background. So uh, I'm the founder of Latinos in VR and AR. So if there's any Latinos in the crowd, uh, let me know. I might have a surprise for you guys at the end. And um, I'm also the co-chair of the marketing committee for the VR AR Association. Um, I'm producing, I do, uh, I'm an augmented reality producer. I'm working currently on several um, augmented runways for New York Fashion Week. So I'm not sure if any of you guys are in that type of space, but really cool stuff happening. And um, I want to kind of start by telling you guys um, also how I got into virtual reality and augmented reality. So um, I, uh, back in 2004, I used to work for CNN. Uh, and part of my job at CNN was to look at all the footage that was coming in uh, from Iraq. And so part of my job was to sit through horrible things like beheadings and bodies of soldiers being dragged through the streets of Baghdad. And when you have that type of job, you kind of turn your humanity switch off just a little bit. Not completely, but just a little bit. And it wasn't until I had my first real virtual reality experience that I didn't really turn it back on. I had done some 360 video, you know, hey, we have, you know, flying over you know, Machu Picchu or something, that's fantastic. But it wasn't until I had my first real virtual reality experience that I didn't say, wow, I turned it back on. I, uh, I was at an event and uh, I put on a headset and I did an experience by The Guardian called Confinement. I'm not sure if anyone here has tried it, but it's basically, uh, they put you inside a solitary confinement cell where prisoners spend 90% of their time, very, very small. and. It seemed like an eternity to me when I was in that experience, uh, but within three or four minutes, I was complete, completely claustrophobic. I had to take the headset off. And at that moment, two things happened. I said, this is the future of storytelling, and I need to be a part of this industry. I need to get into this industry and be a part of it. So uh, that was about two years ago. So right after that, I just started networking as much as I could with everyone I knew that was in the industry. I started learning as much as I could. Um, I started to learn Unity. So I don't come from a technical background, so it was a big challenge, but I'm currently working to get Unity certified, so that's kind of a big deal for me. Uh, but it really brought me, and it, it broadened my horizon. And, and the reason I'm telling you this is because most of the speakers that you're hearing from are technical speakers, you know? Um, I'm, I've, I've adopted some of that technical, some, some of those technical skills, but I, like I said, I come to it more from that creative and storytelling side. Uh, I like to usually start my talks with quotes from important people in the industry. So some of you guys might know Kalem. Uh, I had the chance to meet him at Oculus. I do some, um, I'm part of their Oculus Launchpad, which I'll be telling you guys about. But this is a quote that he, that he said to, um, to Game Industry Biz, and he said, part of my job involves funding content and my heart sinks when someone brings me something that's a shooter, 
because a shooter is almost the lowest common denominator at this point. And I think that that's true. You know, when you're developing virtual reality games, it, they usually tend to be, or even just regular 2D games, they tend to be shooters. So I think that this is about getting outside the idea in, of content. And people always think diversity in VR content, I'm going to come here and preach. You know, I am going to talk about diversity in content creators because I think that's really important. But I want to also talk about diversity in the content you're creating, obviously content creators. And then we're going to talk about audiences. Are you starting to create work thinking about diverse audiences? So in diversity of content, um, how many of you guys are currently developing a virtual, a virtual reality game or a virtual reality experience? Good to see so, some of you guys. My biggest thing to you guys when it comes to diversity of content is are you trying, are you using all your creativity? Because I feel that when you have diversity of thought, when you let those ideas kind of come to life, that breeds creativity and it, crea it, it breeds innovation. So what I'm saying to, the, to you about this is that I've seen developers that are amazing at developing 2D games try to develop in virtual reality. And what is lost on them is that it's not 2D. You know, you're developing in 3D and 360. And, in, and, and they kind of go against it instead of embracing the fact that it is completely immersive and the person that's playing your game has agency, they kind of go against it and they try to bring their 2D into VR and it doesn't work. It doesn't work or at least the product is not as great. So when you guys, those of you guys that are developing those things, try to really embrace it and try to work, um, try to think like, when you sit down and start planning the content for your game or for your virtual reality experience, try to think about it as your stage as a sphere your stage isn't a flat space. Um, and, and one of the reasons I come to this is because some of the work that I've done has been in cinematic VR. And what I have found is that, for example, if you work with a Hollywood actor, they're great in 2D because they're used to getting that close up. They're used to you know, pans and tilts and all that wonderful stuff. But when you put them into a virtual reality 360 degree film uh, or experience, sometimes they don't know what to do because they're not used to that. But if I, if I actually cast a theater actor, I find that those theater actors are a lot more comfortable in that immersive experience because they're used to being on stage and being viewed in their whole totality, you know, entirety. So when you're creating that content, start to think about that. Another thing when it comes to content, um, are any of you guys doing any augmented reality or AR kit or toying around with it? So maybe a few of you guys, yeah, it's, it's fairly new. Um, but augmented reality is going to be huge, obviously. You guys have heard about this. Everyone has been preaching it from the stage. Um, and the content that's going to have to come in augmented reality has to be content that makes it useful, you know? Because I think, you know, I would love to see a Pokemon over here. Pikachu can be hanging out with me. That, that'd be awesome. Uh, but I think that for augmented reality to really become mainstream and adopted, it has to be useful. And that's where when you guys are developing something, you might be able to develop something in augmented reality that might benefit other people. And there might be lots and lots of money in that. So kind of keep that in your mind. So diversity of content creators. Um, I have personally benefited from um, you know, initiatives like Oculus Launchpad. For those of you guys that don't know what Oculus Launchpad is, is uh, Oculus and Facebook have pledged a um, couple million dollars uh, to provide to promote uh, diverse content creators. So they want to spread those diverse voices. They want to make sure that people that have different, you know, different um, views of the world start creating content for the Oculus ecosystem. So they every year, this is the second year they do it. They select about a hundred people. I mean, thousands and thousands of people apply, and they select about a hundred people to come to to Oculus headquarters uh, to do a a weekend boot camp with their top people. And um, I was very, very lucky to be selected for that. So I went to Oculus. I've, um, I've, I went through all their training. And it's just a fantastic experience. So for those of you guys, I'm, I'm sure most of you guys, some of you guys here are students, um, start thinking about that. Look at Oculus Launchpad, because to me, it has been an amazing opportunity. Uh, I'm currently working uh, with Oculus on some initiatives for Latinos in VR and AR. And um, I can tell you have highly benefited from that. And, and what I'm coming to you, what I'm trying to get at is that when you have many more voices being uh, represented in that content, 
the content is only going to get stronger and it's only going to get better. You know, and I know that diversity is kind of an overused word and there's a lot going on in, in our nation when it comes to that, so I'm not here to preach that. But what I'm saying is try to start to think about how you're collaborating with other folks and other points of view when you're creating content. Um, as a woman in virtual reality, I'm not really a gamer, so I'm not, you know, I didn't live through Gamergate. Uh, but as a woman in virtual reality, I have had the experience of being sexually harassed in social VR. And at the moment when it happened, I really had no idea that that's what was happening. It felt bad. Uh, it wasn't until my friend Robert Scoble and Shell Israel told me, I think something's going on. And then I said, wow, yeah, I think that uh, something really bad was going on there in social VR. And, um, and it really kind of inspired me to, to give this talk, to let people know, start creating content, we have a huge chance, guys. We have a really amazing chance in the VR and AI industry to do things right. So start to craft content thinking about how you can uh, have the, you know, the, best, the best and diverse views. Then diversity of audiences. So um, sometimes you might think that you have, you're crafting your game for a specific audience, but you have no idea what's out there. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll give you an example. A good friend of mine developed a really, really awesome ga game for HTC. And um, you know him. <laughs> and now he's starting to develop some, some things um, for the Chinese market. You know, he'd never thought that this could be a game that could, you know, he really was thinking just US market, uh, mostly male dominated. And now he's actually starting to think about some things that he can do to reach the audiences in China and in Asia because VR, VR and AR, VR is really hot over there. So when you start creating this content, don't limit yourself. Start to think about, you know, how can the, I make this content even more appealing to audiences? Who, I mean, who doesn't want their game to be sold, you know, to be bought by millions and millions of people, right? We all want to make money. So start thinking about those things because if you limit yourself, um, you know, you might not have access to that, to those huge markets. And I love that I see it in, I, I normally used to not include this in my talk, uh, but after seeing what's going on with him and how his game is, you know, going to be very successful in Asia, I think, wow, we're not even thinking about those audiences. And um, a very important point here, because I speak throughout the world um, about VR and AR, is that, um, and no, I'm bilingual, of course, um, when I go to Latin America, I tell the folks something. I said, the hardware is universal. You know, everyone has a revive or, you know, a rift or what have you. The hardware is universal. But the content, eventually, the content is going to be going to have to be culturally relevant. And you're going to eventually see more and more content in different languages. So if that is your case, if you do have that, you know, cultural diversity in your background, start to think about how you might be able to use that um, to, you know, to reach different audiences. Um, this is a quote from Robert Hernandez. He works at USC, amazing, amazing guy, one of the reasons I got into VR. Um, and he says, virtual reality cannot go mainstream by excluding half the population. When there are countless diverse active participants in every aspect of this industry, from content, et cetera, et cetera, to marketing, I mean, I'm looking at you guys and I'm seeing a very diverse audience. And I love that. I love the fact that most of you guys that are here are interested in virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, there are amazing groups already, um, like the women in VR group. I'm not sure if any of you guys are member, the girls. You can still be a guy and be a member of it, but uh, there's amazing virtual reality and augmented reality groups uh, that are getting um, great support from, um, from Oculus, for example. Um, during the Facebook Communities uh, Symposium, Mark Zuckerberg actually sat down with the founders of Women in VR and AR. Uh, because it's one of the groups that has gotten, you know, so much support from them and has grown immensely. So start to look for those groups of support, um, you know, be it that, you know, if you're LGBTQ, if you are whatever it is that you describe yourself to be. So um, I also am a big proponent of the fact that we need diverse voices in the industry. There is absolutely no, re no reason this day and age that when I go to a conference that everyone has to be the same type of speaker. Um, you know, uh, I, have, uh, I have friends who speak at a lot of events and they even have clauses that say, I will not speak at this event if there's not a percentage ratio of women speakers, a percentage ratio of minority speakers. Um, you know, I don't necessarily do that, but I do love seeing um, conferences like Orlando IX trying to reach more and more people because you guys need to hear more voices. You guys need to see more people up here that reflect who you are 
the more people you see up here that are different, the bigger your worldview is going to be and the more perspectives you're going to get when it comes to the industry. I'm extremely hopeful. I am extremely hopeful that we're going to be able to build a very strong uh, virtual reality and augmented reality industry. Um, like I said, I have highly benefited from Lo Oculus Launchpad, and um, I urge you guys to check them out. They're, it's an amazing program. Uh, but I also think that we have a great opportunity to kind of uh, resolve some of the sins of the past, let's say, uh, by moving this industry forward. And there hasn't been any industry that I've worked in that has been as inclusive as this one. We've had our issues, you know, VR and AR have had, you know, we've definitely had issues. But I think that we have an amazing opportunity. And, um, and I see this, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever gone into social VR, like alt space VR or anything and um, selected an avatar that is the opposite of you. You know, instead of have me having a, a female avatar, sometimes I choose a male avatar to kind of go and experience how it would be to be, you know, to be in that different situation. So um, as we move forward, especially in, in social VR with our avatars, I think we're going to start to see a change. And moving forward, you know, what opportunities are there? Um, I think you guys are entering the industry in a very exciting time. Uh, hopefully, my big hope is that in September, um, Apple's going to make some big announcements when it comes to augmented reality and their newer phone. And you guys are just going to see a huge explosion in the need for developers and for content, both for VR and AR. So that's kind of it for me. And I want to kind of take some questions um, and see if you guys have any, you know, any questions for me. So. So we have a little bit of time, and we wanted to open it up for questions. So again, um, the mics are right here on the side, and please feel free to line up. Hi. Hi. Um, you mentioned having agency in your games before. Now, that's, that's actually um, a cross-professional work, because I'm a creative writing major, mm -hmm. and one of the things that they try to gr drill into us is that our protagonists also have to have agency. So when, it might mean a different word for me. Yeah. What does it mean to you when you say they had, need to have more agency? Well, basically, when you, have, you been, have you experienced VR? Once, yes. Once, OK. So, uh, and I've had the chance to work with Future Lighthouse, which is a cinematic virtual reality studio. They're doing amazing stuff with Oculus. Um, so basically, when you go into these experiences, you put on the headset, it's fully immersive. You're, you, can, you can look wherever you want. You know, you can look this way, you can look this way, you can look backward, you, you know. It, it, when you're watching a movie, you can only look, only look forward. You know, you can only look at the screen and what they're showing you. So when you're in this virtual reality space, you can choose to do whatever you want in there. So that means that, for example, in the cinematic VR experience, you're going to be able to go into a movie and see a movie a hundred times in a different way. So that's what I mean by agency. The person can look wherever they, can, wherever they want. If, you, if you're creating VR content and you're trying to force people, most people will look forward, that's true, but you do have that agency. So um, if you're creating content and we're tr you're trying to push them to just look this way, like you're trying to bring that 2D into the 3D and 360, and it doesn't necessarily work. I think the best, some of the best pieces that I've seen are the ones that embrace that, that embrace that I can go into the experience and I can choose to look wherever I want, just in real life. You know, when I'm living my real life, I can choose to look back there or there. It's the same thing. I have agency, so that's what I mean by agency. OK. So yeah. if you're like riding on a blimp and you're looking out at the landscape, there's more than one thing going on in one spot. Yes. Yeah, there could definitely be different things going on in different spots. Or even I mean, inside the blimp. Have you noticed the grasshopper at your feet? Ah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's, I mean, there's different ways. And um, one of the biggest challenges, I think, and you're a writer, is when you're writing for VR. You're writing in a completely different manner than, than you did before. Um, it's, it's, it's complicated, it's a new style. You know, I don't necessarily think I'm this, the best writer, but I do have script writer friends that are doing an amazing job at figuring out how to write for this. So, yeah. Right, Thank awesome. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, hello. Hey. Hey, Annie. Um, <laughs> so, I guess I have a question that uh, comes up more for women than for men, but you mentioned about choosing a different avatar. Yeah. Um, for some experiences where it's assigned to you, I find that very uncomfortable. Like I did a military sim where I was a big burly dude. That was not cool. Yeah. So how do you, do you see a big shift in 
like users being able to choose their avatars in future programming? Do you think there will be a like single company that kind of takes that over like Bitmoji did? Any sort of thoughts I think on that? So. I, I think we're going to start to see that, and we're going to start to see that choice where you can choose to be uh, whatever, you know, whatever it is that you want to, to be. And um, I'll give you an example, and I mean, I'm, I'm not advocating this. I don't like this industry, but I will tell you an example that a friend of mine who's a cinema guy told me. He said <laughs> he was watching uh, virtual reality porn. And <laughs> sorry, sorry guys. But he, one day he decided to make an experiment. And he said, you know what, I'm gonna go into this experience and instead of doing the, you know, being the guy, I'm gonna be the girl. And when he came out of the experience, he was like, whoa. He was just kind of like, that gave me a totally different point of, point of view. So uh, not telling you guys to do that. Not telling you guys to go do that, okay? <laughs> but it's exactly that. You, you, in, a, in VR, you have the choice. Mm -hmm. you know, and you should be able to have that choice because you want to experience things in a very different way. And that's one of the magical things, I guess, about virtual reality. So, but yeah, Thank totally you. not saying go do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so earlier you mentioned uh, letting your mind flow and to, to be able to get that diversity in content. I guess what are some steps or strategies to, to get your mind into flowing? Into flowing? Yeah. One of the exercises I like the most when I'm trying to create content is if I didn't have any limitations, like what would this look like? Or if I didn't, I didn't have any budgetary limitations, you know? Uh, let's say I have a project from a client, they only give me a certain amount of money, you know, I, I'll, I'll have limitations. But I start to think about what would it look like if I didn't have any limitations? And in some way, shape, or form, all of us here that are doing VR and AR, we're making the impossible possible. You know, um, with Future Lighthouse that I was mentioning to you guys, we just wrapped up filming um, in a horror, horror anthology uh, with Alex Aja. I don't know if you guys know The Hills Have Eyes. Anyone watch that? Okay, he's, like, he's a virtual reality horror master. And we filmed some, uh, some uh, you know, it's a, it's a horror series for Oculus. Well, one of the episodes is with uh, Robert Englund, Robert, uh, Freddy Krueger. Uh, but we had a lot of challenges during filming that. Lots of challenges that we had no idea we were gonna face. We were filming in a forest uh, in very, very extreme weather conditions. Uh, you know, you, it was just all these things that had never really been done. But we were trying to make the impossible possible. And some things we could do, some things we couldn't do. But at least we were a pushing the envelope. We were really pushing the envelope. So start to think about that. Like how, if, if I didn't have any limitations, what would this look like? Yep, so. thank you. And also I have a follow-up question for diversity yeah, yeah. and an audience and being able to really under or learn about your audience, what are some tips that you have to be able to empathize or kind of find a way to create content for an audience? So, I mean, if you're interested, for example, in the Asian market, try to look at what's popular there. You know, what's selling there? What are people playing? You know, what are, what's, what's popular in the arcades? They're, they have virtual reality arcades popping up everywhere. So, you know, start to like look at those markets and see what might be popular. Yep. So. Thank you. You're welcome. No. I have a I have a question for you here. <laughs> I guess this is kind of a statement question kind of thing, but you know it was interesting um, uh, when I heard you talking about the porn VR that you were. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I was having a conversation with a student earlier today, and one of the things that we were talking about was. Um, the frustration that she has that <clears throat> people don't, you know, in her job search, people don't necessarily return her emails and keep mm -hmm. her abreast and everything. And we started talking about putting yourself in the other person's shoes. Mm -hmm. And the comment I made to her was, you know, one of the things that would be really cool if people taught would be empathy, yeah. sympathy. and as you're building these designs in like VR and whatnot, you're a psychologist, you're not a game developer. Mm -hmm. You're like thinking of these psychological effects and how people respond and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question would be, you know, what kind of thought is giving to those types of things, you know? Like how do you teach yeah. empathy? How do you teach sympathy, you know? Letting people walk in somebody else's shoes and really understand what they're up against. I think we have an amazing opportunity in virtual reality, but we also have huge responsibility. Yeah. When you, what you're mentioning, I think we have a huge responsibility. 
Uh, in the VR world, you're going to see a lot of talk about empathy. It's an overused word, in my personal opinion. Um, if I have empathy for someone, I feel bad for them. I feel bad for what's happening to them. But if I have compassion, mm. that makes me do, that compassion leads to action, not yeah. empathy. Yeah, good so, point. So that's where I think the VR industry has lost that. If I, you know, I feel really bad for the person in solitary confinement. You know, but compassion makes me really care about what they're doing. Yeah. And um, I'll give you an example. My friend Gabo Arora, who he he uh, he does uh, the United United Nations Virtual Reality. Uh, he did Clouds Over Sidra, which is an experience about a girl, um, a Syrian girl in a refugee camp. And he's been doing some amazing, amazing um, content that that kind of brings you that compassion. And he's doing it very in a very, very amazing way. And I think it's exactly that. It's like if you give people the opportunity to walk in someone else's shoes, what do you really want them to walk away with? Everyone's going to walk away with something different. Sure. But it's that responsibility. Yeah. And, and I love what you said about being a psychologist because in some way, shape, or form, you are. Yeah. You're creating this content, and you don't know how it's going to affect other people. Uh, at the UN, they showed clouds over Sidra before one of their bigger meetings. And when, the, when, you know, when all these people, all these diplomats took off their headsets, they kind of saw things in a very different way, if it, you know, at least for a couple minutes. Um, so I think it, it can have a huge impact. In Absolutely. How and, and, and I've had this conversation <laughs> when I first started learning about games even, mm -hmm. how you know, a, a game designer and, and many of friends that I have that are game designers didn't really have a technical background mm -hmm. to start. They had you know, anthropology or psychology or something like that. And really it is the study of people, getting to understand mm -hmm. Um, how they're going to react and with VR you have such much more powerful medium to you know to get Get your experience out there so others can actually walk in your shoes a little it, bit And it is in some way shape or form it can be it can be creatively exhausting Yeah, when you're creating content for those creatively and mentally mentally completely yeah. sometimes it just really drains you because you're You're thinking in a way that you're not used to think yeah, and, and you're creating this content and and it, it can be really, uh, really, it can really impact you sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much for coming out yeah. and spending time with us today. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thanks, guys. And I wanted to uh, let you guys know uh, that uh, if you guys want to join the Latinos, if you are, you know, you, you don't have to be Latino, but if you want to uh, join the Latinos in VR and AR group, please do so. Uh, we actually have some scholarships from Oculus for Oculus Connect 4, which is a developers uh, conference. Um, I'm going to be giving away an entrance a ticket, a free ticket to Oculus Connect 4 in um, their developer conference. So if anyone is interested, let me know. Nice. Right. And are you going to be able to stick around for a little yes, bit? Yes, I'll be uh, here join tomorrow, us at the today mixer? and tomorrow. Awesome. So, yeah. Kathy right. Hackle, ladies.